Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us this afternoon. It's a pleasure to be with you to share a little bit about what urologists do. I wish someone would have had this conversation with me when I was in medical school because I was a little bit late to the game after years of thinking I was going to be a neurosurgeon. Um, but what do we do? Let's, we do a bunch of things. We help people's quality of life and, and cure cancers and alleviate pain. Specifically today, I'm going to speak about what we do to relieve urinary obstruction from an enlarged prostate or BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia. My name is Ricardo Gonzalez. I'm an associate professor of urology and program director for the fellowship at Houston Methodist. My academic affiliations are with Wild Cornell and Texas A&M. I'm original, like, an, like I'm a Tejano from Laredo, Texas. I did my undergrad at Occidental College in LA, then went to Stanford for medical school and Cornell for residency and fellowship and found urology kind of late before uh, kind of applying uh, to, to residency, but I have loved it. Um, and I've been in Houston since 2006 and, and really enjoy what I do. Uh, so let's start before speaking about BPH proper, but we'll just speak about what the prostate is. It's a walnut shaped gland that men have that produce the fluid that transports semen. So when we ejaculate, uh, the, the, most of the fluid that you see, or a lot of it, comes from the prostate. And so it serves a reproductive role, and it shares that urethra with the urine because both the, the urine and the semen come out of the urethra. But after puberty, there is a, a growth that happens in the prostate in most men, and uh, little by little, it grows, and it can obstruct the flow of urine. So when it obstructs, when it grows, it blocks the, the urinary stream, and you can have retention of urine, but before that you can have urgency frequency, getting up at night, um, kidney failure, blood and urine, recurring infections and bladder stone. So it, it, it really impacts quality of life. So what can we do? Let me talk about three procedures that we do because long gone are the days that we have to open someone in their abdomen, open their bladder and treat this problem. This is stuff that we can do through a natural orifice through the urethra without any cuts and sometimes even in the office under general, I mean, sorry, under local anesthesia. So the first procedure I'm going to discuss with you guys is actually called resume. So this is a vapor ablation of the uh, prostate. So we introduce the instrument through the urethra. After having numbed it, we put a flexible needle into the overgrown portions, which that area is called the transition zone. We do a, a nine second injection of steam, which re results in a instant cell death in that compartment. And then over the next uh, one to three months, after having done these steam injections of the prostate, the tissue gets resorbed, alleviating the pressure off of the urethra and helping men um, urinate. Obviously this, result is not instant and it can take a while to get better, but what are some of the ways that we can surgically remove that blockage uh, that are novel or, 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 or new compared to traditional uh, uh, procedures? So this is aquablation. This is a transurethral robotic platform that is image guided. So here you're seeing an ultrasound view. The prostate is that central area near the arrow and you'll see the handpiece, the robotic handpiece getting positioned uh, at both ends of the prostate so that we can plan where we wanna start our treatment, how much prostate we wanna remove. And this is all done with image guided and computer modeling. Then when we step on the pedal, a high pressure water jet, like a, like a pressure washer, will remove that tissue that is causing blockage instantly in minutes. You can see the number on, on the left side of the screen that says like a minute and 32 seconds. Well, it can take about eight to 10 minutes to do a surgery that would traditionally take us an hour Afterwards, we remove the, the robot and then we enter manually, uh, get rid of any clots or debris and then stop bleeding and, and patients uh, are improved with a less invasive procedure. Uh, at the end of an aquablation procedure, you can expect this sort of defect. So that stuff moving is urine. You can see it pass through the prostate where there's no longer obstruction. So that, that is uh, what aquablation does. One final thing uh, to discuss is anatomic enucleation of the prostate. This is very versatile and can be done with several types of laser. Uh, part of my training and part of my development has primarily been with green light or 532 nanometer laser, which targets blood, but it has been done with a uh, holmium laser, uh, thulium laser. We have several lasers that we use, uh, but basically we, we peel the prostate off of its capsule, pushing it into the, into the uh, bladder, and then we in, introduce a morselator. 
which aptly is named Piranha uh, because it has an oscillating blade with suction. And so we can actually uh, chew up that tissue and pull it out through a straw without making any cuts. So uh, patients can expect a faster recovery and less bleeding than with traditional surgeries. So what are some kind of take home messages or conclusions I'd like to share with you about what we do? We have many, many tools with which we can solve problems like enlargement of the prostate. And men with BPH have many options that can alleviate symptoms without compromising sexual function. Remember, the prostate's a sexual organ in a reproductive organ, making the fluid that transports uh, uh, sperm. So, so ways to treat the prostate where you have better imaging help, help us avoid uh, compromising sexual function. And then urologists, the reason we have options is because we innovate. We push the envelope and develop not only these, but many other gizmos that are in the pipeline. So um, really love what we do as urologists and you should consider the specialty because the impact we make truly impacts uh, the quality of life of our patients. And I know I'm speaking just about men, but my practice is, is also with female urinary problems like incontinence and difficult, difficulty controlling the urine. Uh, so, so consider it. Um, I think urologists also make good mentors so seek out someone who can, uh, like any of us, uh, but it's, uh, seek out a good mentor who can guide you uh, and help you make a decision. But urology is fantastic. Thank you for listening to me.